What up, what up, what up? And we back again for another week of the best podcast in South Florida, the Physics Study Group. Yep. How y'all boys doing this week? Amazing. Awesome, awesome. And if your ears work, you might hear a couple of new voices, but we'll get to that very soon. But before we get to that, you need to know who I am. It's your boy, Dramatic, a.k.a. Loud Pat Chopra, a.k.a. Wade Chappelle, a.k.a. Wave and McGrady, a.k.a. Black Galifianakis. And I got a new one. Shout out to my boy, Rasafari Rim. <laughs> <laughs> a.k.a. He, he gave me this one, a.k.a. Malcolm Vex. <laughs> I like it. Yes. I like it. Yes. Like Malcolm it. Vex. Malcolm Thank you, Kareem. Vex. You know who you are. Thank you for that one. <laughs> And you know it's your boy I see Black, aka Black Dynamite, aka Holy Buckaroaches, aka Shabby Ranks, aka Broop Broop Shabby Ranking, aka Swiss Army Nigga, Swiss Army Nigga, Swiss Army Nigga, we got Swiss on the Army Nigga, hey. Yes. Record coming soon. My <laughs> <laughs> own personal SWN. Uh. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> That's S A N. Well, Swiss that's Army. right. Yes, that's no, right. right. Swiss that, Army nigga. Yeah, that's right. And this is Flocka Zulu, a.k.a. Baraka Flocka, a.k.a. Nicodemus, <laughs> a.k.a. Pablo Escovich, a.k.a. What's the other one? <laughs> Gary, Gary, Gary Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. <laughs> AKA remind me of my AKAs. <laughs> AKA, AKA no more AKA. Stop the violence. Bloop, bloop. And with us, we have some very special guests. And as you can see, they're on both ends of the color spectrum, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> Representation. <laughs> yes, man. But we got my boys, John Carlo and Johnny, a.k.a. together. They are eclectic conversations. Yes, sir. How y'all boys doing today? Thank you for being on. Doing great. Right, doing great. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Thank you. Feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling good. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I know you, I know you got some AKA. I'm maybe. Johnny. Yeah, yeah we, I, we, we just <laughs> we <got> we <laughs> whispered that. Yeah, we were talking. We are like, we got to bring some AKAs out. So I'm Johnny, a.k.a. Beige, a.k.a. Yeah. Uh, I used to be called Carrot Top in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Timberlake. Wow. <laughs> but I'm Johnny for right now. Okay. All okay. right, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't bringing up the high school memories, man. Uh, <laughs> John Carlo, a.k.a. The Broken Stereotype, a.k.a. <laughs> Uh, hits from the street. That's what they call me back. Hey, no! no! I need you money for my life. Yes, you look just like that. Yes, I need. Oh money. man, I'm traumatized. So that's what it is. Right? Hey, <laughs> that's they, about it. They didn't call us too many nice things in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a lot of dark skinned friends that hated me because they were getting made fun of. Like it's not me. I'm a friend. <laughs> I'm sorry you're you going through that. AKA Midnight, AKA Shadow, AKA <laughs> Half Past World, AKA Oil Spill. All, yeah, all of them. They well, definitely started. Started, so it's all good. They definitely started. Yeah, you better thank Latin. Idris Elba. <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> exactly. But um, yes, we have a jam packed episode for y'all. But we have to start off on a somber note, unfortunately. Um,. I don't know if you guys know who Anthony Joshua is. <laughs> <laughs> when you said so, I know that's a that's a point. That's a so point. Right, right. Oh, um, <laughs> Anthony Joshua. He's a British boxer. He's six four. He looks like a bodybuilder. He's ripped. Oh, undefeated. That's the dude that got knocked out by uh, Super Mario. Yes, <laughs> he got knocked out by the uh, the flamethrowing plumber. <laughs> Is that actually his nickname? <laughs> no, yeah, that's what Mario? We, we, no. We, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but his name's Anthony Ruiz. And the reason it was hilarious is because if you look at Anthony Ruiz, he's not the peak of physicality, right. for lack of a better term. He has a bear gut. He's built like he got Kirby. titties. He's <laughs> built like Kirby. Yeah, <laughs> However, um, th- um, shout out uh, the captain, Dirty Dan. You know, he's a big boxing enthusiast. He right. broke it down for me. Mm. Because I tweeted, I was like, Joshua threw this fight. That's the only way he uh, lost. Yeah. No, but there's, then there's he was no like, reason. come on. I'm like, explain it. Then he sent me like eight tweets. <laughs> and he cleared it all. I was like, all right, that makes sense. It's, it's, it's re- what his advantage was, was the short reach. Yeah, by the time, exactly. Like, um, and he has some long arms. He's 6'4". So, yeah. yeah, so by the time he pulled back, so other dudes could just go like exactly. this. Like, the whole fight, he was just like, exactly. it looked like a... Uh, he literally looks like Kirby, bro. <laughs> it was like a rock'em sock'em type of thing. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you know, after he um, KO Joshua, every out of shape nigga on Twitter was like, "Yes, <laughs> you got to stop, baby." <laughs> That's like their Obama, right? Now. <laughs> Shout out Andy Ruiz. You you bringing confidence back to a lot of 
bare belly dudes right now. <laughs> Bad bods. For real. But yeah. I just want to see, not even um, when, if Joshua is going to fight Wilder. Like, what is he going to do with Wilder? Mm. Like, Wilder literally wants to kill someone in the ring. He said it. He said my, not verbatim, but he was like, you know, my goal one of these fights is to kill somebody in this ring. He didn't say that. Don't believe me, then. What? <laughs> Don't believe that's me. A, that's some wild thing. He's a wild guy. <laughs> His name is Wilder. <laughs> but he, he can box, though. And he's, he's taller than John. He's what? Six seven. Word. He's a, he's a small four. <laughs> you know That's how, I didn't know he was that tall. Yeah, he's yeah, tall as well. That's wild. And like every punch is like a, a strike. Word. Like you ever seen him punch somebody? Nah, but what? Oh do you, my god! Do you, like, do you, do you, do you guys watch boxing? boxing regularly or at all? Regularly, no. But I I like watching Floyd as much as yeah. maybe some people don't. But <laughs> I like watching Floyd. He's a tactical fighter. Yes. Uh -huh. Wilder, I have seen a few clips of. Mm. I like watching old Muhammad Ali. I, the other day, mm. I found myself on YouTube watching Muhammad Ali. I just like, he just smoothed it with Wait, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a butterfly right, thing right. like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But as of now, no, I don't watch too much boxing. I feel you. Same yeah. here. I'll, I'll watch like an old Mike Tyson fight. Yeah. Right. Or a compilation. Yeah. yeah. That's him yeah. ruining yeah. it. <laughs> AKA, AKA Michael Tyson. <laughs> 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 Those Mike Tyson Mike. fight, like, <laughs> all his fights seem like. Yeah, yeah, those, yeah. <laughs> those Mike Tyson compilations just inspire you for life. What I'm just saying. <laughs> like, like you Agreed. wonder why you're not good at anything you do when you watch a Mike Tyson compilation. <laughs> like, because the way he dodges those punches. I mean, yeah, yeah. and like that, that was a big, a big misconception. Like everybody thought he was a brawler. Like he was just running. And, nah, he was tactical. You can yeah, bob and weave and move. bob and weave and everything. And the crazy part of those compilation videos is that each knockout, like each knockout. You see, like the entirety of the fight. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's that's it. it. Yeah. You, they didn't. They didn't have to edit out any portion of the fight to make it like ding ding. Wow, wow. Word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Over. Here's him fighting so and so. Bam. Here's him fighting so and so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there was there was a video with, with somebody else crying before he went to I heard fight about him. That. Yeah, I remember oh, that shit. video. Uh, he eventually that's got knocked terrible. out, but. Dang man, and that's the amount of fear that he put into people. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, really? and there's there's rumors that there's boxes that he's knocked down, but they stayed down because they didn't want to continue to fight. <laughs> like they could have, but it was like, nah, I'm calling. <laughs> was was the dude who cried? Was that before Tyson bit an ear or after? I think it was before. I don't before. think it mattered. I, I mean, I don't know. I was a compilation. They probably didn't have it in order. Because <laughs> when he bit Holyfield's ear, he was kind of on like after his prime, no. Nah, I mean, no. Tyson was still here. He was right people. at the end, no? It's just Holy Holyfield is there? Yeah. When he no, he was, he was still in his prime. Nah, it was just Holyfield was a better fighter. He yeah. just, he, he had, and I mean, it, Tyson lost a fight to, to Lennox Lewis. Mm -hmm. Lennox Lewis and to, yeah. to one boy that, uh, oh, Buster it, Douglas. Yeah, is he the one that, that like one and done? Like he, he, yeah, yeah. That, that was the, like the upset of the century. I did right. not know about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, and I think they from like the same area in Brooklyn or something. Right. But like, no, like literally, I don't even think Buster Douglas' his mom thought he was gonna win. Right. Nobody picked him and he, to win. and he went in there, patched that boy. Shout out to whoever bet for real. <laughs> oh, man, that was for the same yeah, one person. Boy. Yeah, not yeah. Not, not to keep it on boxing too much longer, but do y'all remember that boxer? His he had his uh, a moniker or alias. It was Prince something. Yes, and he was quick as shit. And he was quick, and he yes. always wore these flashy trunks. <laughs> yes, I, know I used to watch him growing up. I forgot no, his name. No, I watched his compilation. Nah, no, I'm not sure. His name was Prince Zab something. Judah? Zab Judah yeah. might have been, uh, but Hector Prince Hector something was his nickname. Nah, nah, nah. I, nah. I think I know what you're talking about. He was, was a, he was like. Was it, it, it might like, have been Zab Judah, but there was a guy. He always had flashy trunks. He would come in showing out. That's that like. Was that the funniest? He had one of the funniest knockouts. Yeah, he got hit and he dropped and he got back up and I think his body twisted <laughs> and his right foot was like turned in and he kind of like tripped up and, <laughs> <laughs> and he was looking at the rest the whole time. I'm like, I'm good. I'm gonna man. look it up. <laughs> I'm gonna show that. I feel like it's my own though. I, I don't know, but I'm gonna look it up, man. I'll get back to no, you. No, but that, that describes Zab Judah though. He was flashy, he was a New York nigga. Had to, could yeah. be, it could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Zab, like right. Zab quick, Judah. Quick question to wrap up the, the boxing topic. Dude, how much money <laughs> would they have to pay you <laughs> to get in the ring with Mike Tyson for 10 minutes? Mike Tyson? 10 minutes? Yeah. To Mike. get in the ring? To get in the ring. Yeah, to get there, I wouldn't do it. ten million to fight him ten more. <laughs> so ten, so ten minutes is what two rounds. Mm. 
I think I could run around the ring. I was about to say, yeah. I'm pretty sure I could run. I'm pretty sure I could run. I think I could run around. I think I could run around. I played football growing up, so I'm going to give you the perks. Like, what if he chases you? You got to chase me the whole time, bro. Honestly, it's a win-win for me because... I will try to run around, but once I get one good hit, I'm jumping out the ring, bro. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna take the money. <laughs> but by, by the time you like, I see an opening for a hit, and Ooh. then you wake up. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, it sounds like a good idea, but then you read the contract and it says if you die, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then you're like, oh no. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You ever hear boxers like not even just like professionals? It's like they just talking about times they got knocked out. He's like, yeah, man. So I was in the fight. Last thing I remember, dude went like this, and then I woke up. Yeah, <laughs> I was just like, what? <laughs> it's a fun. It's, it's one of the most violent sports out there. It, right? it happened yeah. when they were filming Creed. Michael B. Jordan got knocked out on some play play hits. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. well, he hit him for real a couple it's, of times. They, you know, for the shot, and that was another thing. He said, yeah, I just woke up and. Yeah, because like, it's... Did we get the shot? <laughs> <laughs> and there's certain <laughs> buttons on your face. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot yeah, easier to <laughs> knock somebody out than people realize, especially if you're using bare fists. True. It's a, it's very true. If you get a good hit on somebody, you, you could... Tempo, I guess. Yeah. yeah. There's actually, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's you actually, could kill somebody like that. Yeah. There's absolutely. actually a trick the military teaches to slap some, to knock someone out by slapping them in the face. That's some there's a particular shit. way you slap <laughs> someone to knock them out. That's some pimp shit. I get, if I get slapped to sleep, <laughs> Somebody gotta get shot. I'm moving out. No, guys. Yeah. 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 Tonight. 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 <laughs> Tonight. Hey, you forgot <laughs> about Pimp Le Pew. <laughs> Bro, you don't remember that? The dude was like, Powder? No. Oh, you missed the episode and the story we told about you. You don't remember? Oh, that? yeah. <laughs> we'll that, revisit that later. That disrespectful story. <laughs> I still owe y'all the faith. I was missing for an episode and the story they gave the good people. Is that a a, a, a man? Long story short, he was trying to me to sleep. He was trying to save a prostitute, <laughs> and the prostitute's pimp came from behind and slapped him. Slap him. <laughs> what? what? And he woke of... up at his mama's house. <laughs> what kind of? <laughs> it was off the cuff. It, it, it was but then they're like, like forgive they're me. like, what what story would would, would piss Flocka Zulu off the most? That's ding ding ding. That's exactly what we said. And then and they went with that. Have a man hilarious. Palm slap him to sleep. Hey, but well, I definitely think the mayor's idea would work for you in that case. Word. For real. Mayor of Baltimore. Exactly. You know, Jack Young, he proposed an idea uh, to settle local beefs through a boxing ring for everybody. Just come in, you know, lower gun violence, different types of ideas. But what do y'all think about that? Because I think it's a super dope idea to have someone, to have people settle their disputes on the street in a ring where everybody can see. Well, I mean, first of all, if it's organized properly, then I feel like it can't work. They just have to, like, monitor it and make sure, you know. Oh, remember the last Boy Scout middle mm-hmm. football game nigga pulled out the blinky? <laughs> I don't want a nigga to do that in front of the boxing right. match, you know what I'm saying? Like, ding, right. ding, 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 blah, you know what I'm saying? But as long as you organize it, oh, yeah, I think it can work. Word, dude, because man. usually growing up, when we didn't have pistols as often as we did now, after you fought, the beef was over. Word, in high it. school, middle school, and all that. Word. You know what I'm saying? So, I yeah. mean, it can work. I believe it can work. Yep. Yeah, so, what do y'all think, like... Well, what do you mean by... When you, when you say you think it's organized, what do you mean by that? Like, what type of organization are you looking for? I so, mean, right now, it's just it's, an, right, right now it's just an idea. So, um, the idea is to have public boxing. So, I, I'm sure, like, there's going to be... It's going to be staffed. There's gonna be like. Um, See, my thing is, my thing is, you don't, you you don't plan a beef. You don't plan fights. So if, so if, if I'm about, it, all right, if I'm actually gonna use this, and I don't really get into fights. I'm a very diplomatic person. I like to talk through things. Mm. But let's say someone was ready to get into a fight. It's not like. See me later, like nah, y'all trying to go <laughs> I at can, it. Right yeah, now. I, I, can, I can see that, you know. I but, can see, I can see some some shit being talked and be like, you know what. Meet me down there, uh, we can sell this in front of everybody. Sure. Mm-hmm. So but they do that. In, in but then that's when I say, like, how does the organization work? Are you, I got to call up the ref now. Like, I got to. Right. Well, <laughs> no, so yeah, that's true. Yeah. What I would imagine it being, it would be like a rec center. Yeah. Okay. Where I would say it's more so like an avenue. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, come get, you know, trained and how to box and stuff like that. Well, there I mean, I think it's still, the, the thing is, like, in Baltimore, shout out to DMV, by the way. Um, like, we have, like, they have, like, 
like the King of Baltimore competition is like a dance competition. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people out there from different backgrounds that, you know, that's an outlet. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a big community outlet where a lot of people do come together, they talk this stuff, they go about their business. Like a fight mm-hmm. and a having it where someone can say, Hey look, man, I'm gonna see you later, like it's possible. Mm-hmm. Because I know that one, I'm doing it in a structured and safe environment where like I could really put as much force into you as possible and not get in trouble and get arrested for it. Right. If I know there's an I know the, if I know the incentive is that I'm not gonna get arrested for me whooping your ass, mm-hmm. dog, we we setting up a date. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like that's I feel like I feel like I see it, but I also feel like there are people who fear the embarrassment and that's really why like it it just wouldn't work. They're gonna they're gonna resort to guns because if you're an individual who's insecure in maybe your ability to defend yourself or are insecure about being embarrassed in front of a lot of people, mm-hmm. are you going to agree to get into a ring and fight? No, you're going to pull out a gun. And, and, and yeah, you would have done that. But you would have done that and that insecurity would have kicked in initially without lights, without people around you anyway. True. So it's like, true, true. that's usually when you think about gun violence and these reactions is usually out of insecurity or, or, or what have you. So, I mean, you know, it, it is a risk. It is a risk, but you also coming in with the with the knowledge like, yo, if, <laughs> you got to be confident in knowing that I'm about to go ahead and do this in public mm-hmm. or not. Like, I've honestly thought about like just people setting it up in private. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, this is not televised, but this is something that like, yes, the community knows about. But you know, if somebody got on video, got on video. But this is not like a public display. This right. is like mm-hmm. a underground, but it's like a, a legal underground thing. Like, I, that's where infrastructure I, I could see that happening right. too. Like I could see like one of them homies like going up to one of the trainers or whatever, like, hey me and him want to fight, but we ain't trying to make him a big thing. Like I and to be like, all right, come come in after like, come through. You know what I'm saying? So I could see that like it's not what I it's not gonna solve everything. It's not gonna end every case of gun violence. But what I do appreciate is that it's something. Yeah. Right, and it's something outside the box. Right, and just yes. imagine the, the 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 local leaders out there communicating to them how look, you can express yourself the way you want to, but let's be smart about how we do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna be here to like give you a space to do it. If you violate my space, then we got a problem. True, you know what I'm saying? And like that, I think is is the best way to kind of like do this, <clears throat> do this alternative method successfully. Is like for the leaders and the people that actually have it to be able to be the voice to run it. If it was like mm-hmm. the ma- if it's the mayor. And like people in politics trying to organize this, mm. it just wouldn't come off right. Nah, it wouldn't be if, genuine. If, you know, if, if, if I'm, unless he's from the, you know, what I mean? if exactly. I'm the boxing association, I'm supporting this because you, money. you could exactly you could find that, you could set up recruiting pipelines. Mm-hmm. But oh, then right. that, exactly. But then, but then that benefits the community and them. You know exactly. I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the part that might eliminate the idea of my embarrassment. We'll get a gun. Is that. Can I get another? Can I? Can I, can get, I get a contract? Can I get a contract? Am yeah. I? Is there going to be an incentive for me despite me getting my ass? Right. Am I going to yeah. be okay <laughs> with walking away and I still got a check? Right. Word. You know and, what I'm saying? And that's a lesson a lot of young niggas. <laughs> I do stop using that word. A lot of young kids need to learn to um, <laughs> learn to have like to be able to take an ass whooping and keep it pushing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you, that's a life lesson. That's a life that's lesson, a life bro. Lesson. I guarantee. You said you went through your granddad. Word. I guarantee if you if you fight 10 people, you lo- I don't care who you are. You're losing at least one or two of them fights. I don't care who you are. You yeah. can be Mr. Roughest Toughest. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you're not a professional. Like, word. <laughs> word. Your, your foot might slip. You know what I mean? Whatever happens. If you Something might get in your eyes. Word. Like, you know what I'm saying? saying? Like, it's it happens. Process. I agree. I def- my thoughts on that are the idea is just an idea at the moment, and we don't know how they're going to enforce the logistics of it or what the logistics are. There could be a, pl- it could, you know, to just add an idea to it, it could have more than one, um, you can have more than one atmosphere in these establishments, right? Mm-hmm. So you could have the private sector or the private section where, oh, I don't want anybody to know about this, or I'm gonna kick your ass in front of everybody since you disrespected me and my family. Mm-hmm. And if they agree to it, you know, you sign some papers and you go fight and handle it. I think that also plays a part into when you have a structure behind this and a system behind it, it also plays into, well, how serious is this problem? Because you might not care about the issue hours <clears throat> from now, a day from now with this person. And you're, if, say your fight scheduled a day or two from now or even you know I, oh, the, the ring is not free for another hour y'all might even chop it up and squash the beef right there like i think a, mm. uh, an idea like this creates 
the opportunity or a safe place for people to work things out in more than one way than just boxing. Right. At least take a yeah. second, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. a lot of times that's all you need to be like, make the decision not to do something. True. And then the idea of it itself, you also had to bring it to light is the fact that we have to be this creative Mm -hmm. to create a space where we can reduce gun violence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Good point. Like, yeah. we got to go to the extremes to say, all right, the best case scenario mm -hmm. to prevent gun violence is for y'all to still conduct violence. Mm -hmm. but, not deadly deadly violence. but not well, deadly violence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, mm -hmm. one of the things, that, and, and I would love it, too, because it does, it, it has shown that we as a community and people as a community are willing to do whatever it takes to reduce the violence in the community. Or in the neighborhoods and one of the things that i know some schools in baltimore at least one of them particularly did is that they incorporated mindfulness and meditation instead of detention mm. which was well wow. needed because it reduced mm. like statistically speaking like the the actual the, the outcome showed like a good 90 plus percent 99 of the students that were usually in detention were not Mm. Because they learned that while the time they were in quote unquote detention, it was it was, it was meditation. Now, mm. how to manage, how to cope with with anger, how to cope with certain stress and anxiety, how to right. manage their emotions a lot better, express it in a healthy way. Right. So, like, I love the fact that what the city's doing. I love that. I love the creativity and the necessity of like being different for the sake of like reaching out to people that you have to be different to 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 teach them how to how to learn something like that. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell them right from wrong, the the, the way that. You know, cookie cut away. You got to mm, be yeah. creative. Yeah, and, yeah. It, and it opens up room for for passion, man. Because I feel like that's that's one of the main things that our community lacks avenues for passion. So mm. when you think about like different, like I just think about all the different just wild activities that I see people doing, like mountain climbing, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. paragliding. That's just you know random stuff that people make money behind mm -hmm. that our community just doesn't get involved in. You feel me? And um. I feel like any avenue to where some like a kid could try something and figure out that he likes it. Like I could just imagine like how many people are like, oh, I kinda like this boxing thing. Right. And kinda mm -hmm. and take it serious. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you probably wouldn't have never found out had it not been so I feel like anything though, like boxing, fencing, um, any any form right. of badminton. activity competition, that, really. Badminton yeah. that somebody could potentially form a passion for. Yeah, but, we, but we got to normalize and to model it because mm -hmm. like the normalcy for for kids especially kids of color is like rapping and basketball and football like that's yeah. it you know what i'm saying and, yeah. I'm, and I'm, exactly dealing with, I, yeah, I'm dealing with kids that, that think they're going to be that think they're going to basketball i tell them straight up guys you suck y'all need to think of a backup plan it's okay to have a backup plan because that backup plan might be the the thing that really puts money in your in your pocket mm -hmm. you might you might go pro you mm -hmm. might get it you might only be there for a year Word. And you know even, what i'm saying because not even because sometimes i don't really like to bring up the backup plan i like to be like you know sometimes your passions change you, right not sure you, you might not want to play basketball for because mm -hmm. that's in, in, when you really think about it an athlete's life is like you know what I'm saying? You're just putting your body through all this sure. all this stuff. And there are people who make a lot more money putting a lot less stress on their bodies. You know what right. I mean? Absolutely. Like, or just happier. Happier, happier yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. You but, know what I mean? And you know, even with sports, with something that starts in adolescence and childhood, mm -hmm. your, your frontal lobe isn't fully developed. As you grow, you might realize, oh, I don't like this as much as I used to, mm -hmm. no matter how good you get at it. Mm -hmm. you, might find, you might find that intellectual or that uh that uh that other you know alternative interest mm -hmm. and you know so right yeah no, 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 exactly yeah. but yeah like i definitely think that's a point that you know we a lot of times adults do push their passions on their children too yeah mm -hmm. and there's not enough of an outlet or safe place safe space for them to express what their passions are mm -hmm. as they develop right so they just think oh well my, you know my dad my mom says this is the way to go because i'm so good at it anyway i'm just going to stay there mm -hmm. and then you you know you have a quarter life crisis like yeah, right. no, yeah. yeah. Cool. Man, but we <laughs> have to we have to normalize diversity in what we like and our mm -hmm. passions like it yeah. can't be just these three things like you know what i'm saying like I love, I love taking pictures now. Like photography is a hobby of mine that I definitely love picking up. It's okay to do that mm -hmm. if you got a talent. You know, what I mean, don't feel ashamed for it. And I think that's the thing. Like a lot of these kids are probably really, really want to do a lot of things that will probably down it. You know, what I'm saying, like, mm -hmm. oh, that's whack, that's gay, that sounds stupid. I'm like, mm -hmm. nah, bro. Like if you sing, you dance, you, mm -hmm. you're freaking good at chess, dog. Like milk your talents. Cause you gonna get older, and all these people that were talking down about it are not gonna be here no more. You're gonna mm -hmm. look back like, damn, yo. I really could have been doing this. I could have been playing viola. I've been playing viola. I played viola since the fourth grade, and I stopped in high school because my dumb ass thought 
Mm. It just wasn't a cool thing to do. Mm. And I was like one or two only viola players in there. Mm. Yeah, so, for the bit, bro, and we, we even had conversations about that. You know what I mean? It's like, how much, how much of exactly that, you know, that dream get, that's crushed by just out the outside influence. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and and definitely, it's important to have these other outlets as we're expressing because you know you might even find yourself where your outlet, and I'll make it personal, where my outlet just kind of kept me out of trouble. I got into skateboarding, which at the time in the early '90s, no one knows being black in North Miami Beach, um, and then be shout out um, three hundred five. What's up? <laughs> no one else was really doing that from back the zoo. Then. From the day hey, I've stayed in the zoo for just a little bit. Shout out Carroll City too, but um. I definitely found myself in skateboarding because I was around, like, you know, my, my dad was living in California and I had family out there as a kid. And, you know, seeing that so much, I found an interest in it. I started skateboarding at like four. And I was like the only kid in the neighborhood skateboarding. So black dude would always get made fun of or whatever, even though I was friends with everybody at the same time. And, but that kept me, like, I would go to school the next day because I was skateboarding at home. I go to school the next day, like, yo, man, this gang was just chasing us with some bats and nines yesterday. Where were you at? Oh, I was out on skateboarding. skateboarding. Like, it was a regular <laughs> thing for me where I realized, like, because all day I'm thinking about going home to skate. Mm. <clears throat> and so that that's just an example because even being in the wrong place at the wrong, wrong time, like the Central Park Five, you know, it, a passion can keep you out of a situation like that. Mm. And, you know, and for those of y'all who don't know about the Central Park Five, you know, the new movie on Netflix, when they, um, see when they see us and you know i'm not saying that these young black men didn't have outlets but i guess just to play that into a personal testimony you know having an outlet can keep you out of trouble um unfortunately so you, you got more information on the central park five about how it all went down Jordan? well yeah they were telling me earlier they said this woman was raped in central park and you know <clears throat> they didn't know who did anything and I think you said the prosecutor police just went around and they gathered did, up. They pretty much just roped up roped every, up, yeah. every like black boy that was in the park. At the yeah, time. and then there were seven of them, but two of them got off, and five of them. Um, the five that the movie is about served what sixteen years in jail or something like that. Wow, so, yeah. Some ridiculous, yeah. like like you said earlier, a chunk of their lives right. was in behind bars in prison. And that's that's just to um, to highlight just another another barrier. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We talk about like the the limit, the limited scope to where um, our community sees themselves in. Like you talk about like kids only saying, "Oh, I want to be a football player, basketball player, I want to be a rapper," because it's like that's what they see people who look like them be successful at. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, and and that that other blockade towards like this just justice system. Yeah, it's like you know what I mean? Justice system. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> All they do is arrest just us. Message! Ah. Ching. Oh, wait. <laughs> snap. Message? On a serious note, and also, I didn't I didn't know this, um, that the, the guy they caught, they, um, they caught him because he raped two other women, and I think he admitted to it. And it happened later that week. From the first rape, the actual the rapist. Yeah, the actual rapist. He rapes a woman that same week at the end of that week, um, after the Central Park Five thing. So, and um, I hate to quote Charlemagne because sometimes he's annoying, but <laughs> he did say, you know, the prosecutors that you know that convicted and everything, their hate for black boys is stronger than their um, their love for women or their, their protection mm -hmm. for women or whatever. Word. Because why use why you over here on falsely accusing? Two other crimes will be committed. Same crime, committed two more times. Word. But, you know, let's get in. What I love about this, mm -hmm. you know, this conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh, and shout out Abel Duvernay. Not what just I, your woman director, but a black director. I, what, I, what I love about these guys is that <laughs> they create spaces mm -hmm. for these conversations to be had. You know what I mean? On a Safe regular spaces. basis. These eclectic conversations. Word. So, <laughs> so I want you guys to kind of like, you know, speak to what you do and, and what like, you know, what got, gave you guys inspiration to start these events and um, and, and to go forward? Oh uh, man, there's a, a long winding story about how we got to, oh, we got time, to where we are, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear. Uh, so like in general, John and I have been doing stuff like this in our own spaces since like FIU. Like we've had 
plenty of moments where like we'll be in our own dorms or actually together like randomly before we really like really connected like being in the same room and just having conversation gettys and stuff like that just talking and chopping it up no title or anything like that and i mean that's kind of like like one of the remnants of like how this became organic for us to do mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying um you know obviously you know life hit and like i started venturing off and i and i visited some places where they actually did do something called conversation parties man uh shout out to kanasha shout out to, to denzel burnside like they had little get-togethers at their crib where they have food and potlucks and they they, they had a, a conversation party man it was like it was something i thought was super dope and it just i just met people mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i got to be connected with a lot of a lot of new knowledge and wisdom and uh you know i kept it in the back of my mind John and I linked back up, man. We started talking about about doing something special, man, and 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 the concept just just rekindled. And, and honestly, man, like, yo, he's he's been amazing and supportive, and like, our journey together has been amazing, man. Yeah. And though he's got he's got another side to the story as well to add. So, well, I mean, same story, but uh, we've been doing it a little over a year now. October twenty seventeen. Oh, we've been when we started. Like oh wow! Yeah, officially think... started. Our first one was at Funky Buddha in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, and yeah. then we found some other venues that we've done up until then. We've been in about maybe five or six venues since then. We're now at um, Vegan Fine Foods in Fort Lauderdale. Shut up. Yeah. And they've been real accommodating for us. This beautiful space. Um, Great, great food, food honestly i mean you don't even have to really be vegan to enjoy the food there <laughs> and Facts. when i was at they joined in that one time which was even doper yeah the, the, the employees oh yeah the yeah, employees yeah, definitely yeah. joined in because they're you know they're humble down yeah. to earth mm-hmm. people they they like to have their input but i think that's where the true value or the true power of what we're doing lies is that this isn't relegated to certain type of people like this is mm-hmm. anyone you come in and you contribute and however you know how to you express yourself Mm -hmm. so the whole purpose for us to do this was to give people an opportunity and an outlet to express themselves and work on their social skills being uh, verbal communication Mm nonverbal communication assertion being able to assert yourself in a situation isn't something that comes naturally to everyone Mm -hmm. so if you can come into a space and really express yourself and be able to work on those things in a safe space where no one's judging you mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. then there's a real benefit to people and i think that's why people continue to come back for sure yes yeah. i think that's the most important thing you said though at the end too in a safe place in a safe space where no one's judging you mm-hmm. that's a big deal mm-hmm. you know um where most people in society are overly concerned with what people think and that gives you the ability to look within when you have a safe space. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's essential. And as someone that, you know, attended a couple of them, first of all, you guys do a great job. And the best thing about it is the comfort because most of the time when I go there, I know y'all two and maybe five more people. Mm-hmm. And it'll be 20 to 25, 30 people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for some odd reason, I feel no way about sharing mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. When I'm there, no, sorry, before I get there, when I'm there, when I leave, I'm never like, damn, I just share all this shit with strangers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everybody, they either empathize with you, mm-hmm. they either try to help you, I'll give you advice or whatever. And like, you know, it's a great space. And like you said, connections and everything. That, yeah. That's that been like, man. I, so I love bringing people together personally. Like, I just love the sight of seeing people, especially from different backgrounds, mm-hmm. like, chip away at any limitation and really realize that yo we got a lot in common yeah. and that you dope you yes. man you cool as shit dog yeah. and like yeah. i've heard people say like hey man you know this is a space where normally if i saw this person walking down the street i really probably wouldn't i wouldn't talk to him mm-hmm. and uh-huh. now that I, I was i was thankful to have an opportunity to talk to him in this space i realized how much i'm missing out the world and how much i was missing <laughs> out people like you know what i mean like this uh-huh. person and that's like a beautiful thing you know what i'm saying like being able to connect people in that way and that's what makes the space so safe is that i think everyone that participates genuinely comes in with the idea that this is a safe space therefore like i'm going to be attentive to your needs i'm going to be attentive to what your story is and i'm going to be open to giving you some type of feedback to help you because it's also helping me mm-hmm. and plenty of times we're like oh you go through that too you yeah. think that too you feel that way too mm-hmm. and when you have 
mutualness, TPSG dictionary. <laughs> when, you have, when you have mutualness, that's what opens you up and makes you comfortable. Like I've never seen anyone like, even if they didn't talk, like within it, they spoke after. Well, yeah. like some people do have issues with speaking in front of people when it's like that, but after it breaks down, they talk more. You get what I'm saying? We we typically encourage people to do the opposite of what they're used to doing. Yes. So yeah. if you're someone who likes to converse a lot, speak, we ask that you listen. Mm -hmm. Or if you're someone who like who doesn't speak much, we ask that you Got challenge it. yourself to speak because you're working on those skills, mm -hmm. right? right? Listening is just as important as speaking, if not more important. Of course, absolutely. So when you when you notice and you look around, and you see there are people who aren't saying much. Mm -hmm. It's usually for that reason, or maybe they are feeling uncomfortable. But it's it's okay. Mm -hmm. We're all there to to be in each other's presence and to contribute in our own ways. And you learn a lot if you just sit there and listen. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a patient. Definitely. It's a patient process because some people. They often don't talk, and they and they said to me, you know, afterwards, like honestly, man, I just been taking in the energy and just what people have been saying, like, you know, mm -hmm. I just really appreciate just you know the knowledge that I'm getting, and then others over time, the comfort level, mm -hmm. yeah, their voice. I think that I think what another aspect is that we're always validating everyone's voice. You know what yes. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So even if you don't talk one month, you know, the next time you're there. The topic or whatever might hit you to where you where you speak, mm -hmm. and I think we celebrate that in those moments, mm -hmm. especially for the regulars. And and we have someone that doesn't speak much, you know, one time that ends up saying something like, the energy around that person sharing is a little different just because it you're shifts. celebrating yeah. the fact that now you're opening up to us in a way that is reciprocal. You know? Yeah. 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 Once that comfort kicks in, you know, you wake up being that's a huge deal, and I and I can relate to that being someone who is normally amongst like a smaller group of friends that I'm already comfortable with. I will <laughs> talk a lot, uh, but when I'm amongst a crowd of people I don't know as well, or that I'm, or if I'm just in a in a large group, I'm usually just observant most of the time and reactive to everything else, and you know, kind of taking everything in. And I've been that way at your conversation parties. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, I've come and just kind of watch to hear their opinions because you always hear something you always hear something you wouldn't expect and then that opens your mind to a new thought path or you know it, so the, even you know everyone's getting something from it it may not be measurable and the, the the difference is not going to be visible to everyone but I, we I, I could say I appreciate it you know? Thank you. and during your time have you guys ever had a situation where someone's opinion was too jarring <laughs> yes. Yes. I was so, there. <laughs> speak, speak about those times and like how you handle it and how, like how you've learned how. Because I'm pretty sure that's not an easy situation. <laughs> I, I got my own. Not easy. I got you, my own. Well, there's a, okay. The first thing to realize that we have to realize as moderators is that there's going to be conflict, whether it's small or large. Mm. There are people who have strong opinions and maybe don't know how to deliver it in the best of ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there have been situations where that happens, for sure. Thankfully, we haven't come across a situation where we have to ask someone to leave, but there are times where people will share an opinion and, like, and the majority just doesn't agree, yeah. but they're still forceful with their opinion and the best we can do is either speak to them off to the side or talk to them after the fact but at the end of the day i personally believe it's important to still allow them to do that because they're going to learn and realize how to deliver mm -hmm. their opinions once they see the reaction once they see the aftermath of that and once they start to realize there's a different way that this can be done, because there's a specific there's one specific person I'm thinking of right now. And I'm not going to mention any names, but <laughs> this person from the from the first time I've met this person, I've known him, I've known them a long time from the per first time I met him up to this point. He's always been a fiery individual, but from the time mm -hmm. he came to our first conversation party to now. He's grown a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's definitely grown a lot and he almost checks himself now mm. when we're at the parties. Like he'll Good be, facts. he'll be, he yeah. sees he's giving, sharing an opinion 
And then you will start to see, he'll start to say things like, wait, wait, let me, let me, you know, he'll check himself. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is mm. where the true Word. beauty of what we're doing That's is. Awesome. It's in that. Learning That's accountability awesome. is a safe space to be wrong. And, you know? John, and John mentioned something, he didn't say it here, but we were talking about what one of the situations, one of the conversations that brought up in that he mentioned was that, you know, the person shared that they never talk that much in general, right? Mm. So it put in perspective for us, and he mentioned it like, this is probably their only space where they can actually talk right. this much in this capacity because they never really got a chance to growing up. So in learning that as moderators, it's being able to to comfortably step back and be within our, like, sometimes our anxiety will kick in and be like, yo, I gotta like cut this out, or, like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. knowing, that, knowing that the person has a particular story as to the why they're doing it, makes it a lot easier. I think that's what we, we do as moderators is to really understand that there is a why. Mm -hmm. Imagine, imagine, all right, here we go. We're all young. We're out going to play basketball. Imagine being the person who never gets picked, but you want to play so bad, so bad. And then finally one day you get picked. Oh, you're going all, you're going all out. You're going all in. Every shot. You're yeah. shooting every shot. Yeah. 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 And that's what happens. You less it, yeah. They get, you know, a person gets the opportunity to finally speak and they're just 100 miles an hour. They're going. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. pretty much yeah. what it is. That's, that's a like form of therapy, too. Yeah. That's absolutely. letting people speak. You know what I mean? Let, let them get off their chest. You know what I mean? Yeah. A, a lot of times, and letting people be wrong. You know what I mean? Because it's a, I feel like we demonize wrongness too much. Mm. Like somebody, like, you know, says something and you're an idiot, you know, that you're a dumbass. And I'm like, you, you just, you're like, and I'm, 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 I'm guilty more so than anybody in this room probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but go ahead. Yeah, but, <laughs> and, you know, and it's not a, it's not the right way to go about it. I mean, like, no. let people grow from, and that's why a lot of people hold on to a rock because it's a pride thing. Yeah. Somebody, Called you an idiot. It's like you just, you hold on to it even more rather than challenge your, your so, own thought. So how would you say you react to someone disagreeing with you or to someone thinking that you're wrong? How do you move through that situation? Some sometimes the argument you could you could have the argument or the the, the debate because I've had debates before where very quickly into the debate I'm like damn I'm wrong, but. We're still having a debate, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I learned. You know what I mean? In that situation, so learn to learn to do, learn to what? Learn to see either see something in a different light, or oh, okay. or even change my mind completely based on seeing it from a different perspective. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times people write people off, but it's like, nah, they probably went away thinking like, nah, they had a point. So, <laughs> as you said that. I started to think about our first unofficial official conversation party at the, the apartment. Right. And, whoo, yeah. So uh, we did have uh, a situation where we haven't seen that person come show up to the, to the actual <laughs> conversation party again. I, I mean, we can't really say it's for that reason, but yeah. it, mm -hmm. it, it could point to it. it but, yeah, there's a weird... Okay, I was I I would I would think there could be a correlation. It could but, be. I'm not saying there's not. I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe 50, not. 50. Yeah. But what I did notice out of that was that despite there being a uh, a difference in opinions, it was still supportive by a lot of people. Like this was like what I what I enjoyed watching this disagreement transpire was that it was respectful mm -hmm. and. Yeah. It would generally was like I get what you're saying, I don't agree with it, and I you know and and respectfully saying like here's my perspective on what what my experience is regarding the matter, mm -hmm. and it was just shared in that way, and mm -hmm. I really like that was so energizing to see a conversation like that transpire without it becoming problematic. Mm -hmm. um, like that's what I loved about it is that you know I don't we don't announce it that much anymore as far as like the the intro speeches or whatever, but like, yo, when it comes to debates and, and, and people disagreeing, like that's a that's a thing we we encourage. Like yeah, we, that, we don't we don't want you to be yes people, you know, throughout the throughout our event. Like if you disagree with it, dog, 
you have the space to do so. And I think I think because we all know that this is a safe space that we can do it respectfully. Mm -hmm. And and it so it's space it, it's safe because obviously Giancarlo and I are there moderating and probing, asking certain questions and maybe if we sense it's getting too heated, we'll bring it down a little bit. So I think that's why it, it is considered a safe space because if someone gets into an argument or altercation or it gets too heated, we're always there to support. And that I think that has been helpful in a lot of disagreements. It's been helpful in a lot of conflicts because normally what will you see? You'll see someone pull their phone out or start recording your ass. Yeah. Right. You see someone start to record you because there's an altercation about to happen yeah. and they want to instigate. And so th we offer that opposite uh, support, if you will. Yeah. Have you guys yeah. ever, do you ever find yourself having to keep your own emotions in check? No, personally, I don't. I think I've, I think I've let that, I've let that go a few, few shows ago, a few uh, events ago, man. So you have. I was genuine. Like everything, every everything in terms of like how I interact and approach when it comes to that stuff. When it comes to life in general, man, I definitely try to be a hundred percent genuine and passionate. And I think that moment when I got emotional, like I became very vulnerable in a space that I was so used to being a moderator in. Yeah. But I also felt emotionally compelled to be vulnerable because I needed it for myself. Mm -hmm. in that moment how am i going to be a moderator in a space that i value and not honor it by doing the same things that i'm expecting others to do in that same space right. mm -hmm. so that was for me was something where i like i yeah it, when, I, it got to me and I, and, I, and I let it out when i when i think of keeping your emotions in check like i let my emotions out well i guess what i mean I, is do like, you act out of character no no okay. <laughs> Or even not, not, I don't. I would. I would say neither of us. No. Challenge where you have to be like, all right, let me calm down. And, uh, I I will say the most. So the most heated, uh, the most heated conversation party we had, where maybe I felt like I was going a little too far, might have been the uh, Me Too movement one. Mm. We spoke about it. It was we titled it Me Too movement, but we really spoke about women's rights and domestic violence and it kind of feels always to kind of put a, a tie like that on it yeah you know, i don't want to <clears throat> right it was really like domestic violence mm -hmm. women's rights things of that nature and as men we have been we've always taken this position of power and you know you know about patriarchy and how mm -hmm. yeah. Men have been, I guess, historically running this country and maybe the world. But when you're put in a space where, where you're put in a position where it's time for you to shut up, it challenges your ego because you still want to have your voice heard. But you have to understand that it's not time for your voice to be heard. It's time for someone else's voice to be heard. And you need to check yourself in that, in that situation. So I think that one was challenging for me. I won't say I acted out of character, mm -hmm. but I definitely felt I definitely felt like um, I had to bring myself back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Why did so, you feel challenged? Why did I feel challenged? I felt challenged because I wanted to speak, and oh, that's what it was. And it wasn't it wasn't my it's like it's not mm -hmm. time for me to speak got to give yeah, the yeah. people who this is about the opportunity to speak and it's not for me to it's not for me to ju uh, not judge but it's not for me to validate, validate anything mm -hmm. for for the people who are experiencing women for women who are experiencing a certain thing yeah right? oh, it's right. not my place right. right and what, right. what made that that uh, topic difficult as well is that there has there is this really tough situation where uh the me too movement in itself is just about women's experiences and then there are there are men that are aligning their experience to the title of me too as well mm. and there is there is a split there honestly is a pushback with you guys need to have your own right. and there's and there are all those are like 
it's a, like you, we include you into this experience because this is about sexual assault and experience of harassment and men do talk, men do experience it and don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so to me, what I was noticing when it came to uh, that particular event was the challenge of some people just being like some of the men just trying to open up to like be vulnerable in their own way. But at the same time, there were also men that were uh, trying to just talk about the issue that had nothing to do with them either. And that that was a very challenging like space to be in, in terms of understanding. But I think as a group, we process that. Yes. That to me was probably the most important part is that we process and reflect on all those difficulties that we were experiencing within that time period about how we were trying to be included but not be included, how we didn't feel like we should be included and all the stuff in between. And I think that to me was a healthy dialogue in itself. That to yeah. me probably was the true part of the... Uh, there was, there was, if you will, there was closure. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And it's always good to have some sort of closure at the end of a conversation. Mm-hmm. So, to wrap everything up, what are some things that are in the future for the collective conversation? Are like locations, like, you know, extra activities you're gonna add inside the conversation, like, you know, anything like that? So yeah, we have a cruise trip. No, let me just <laughs> hey, the cruise uh, yeah. future. Pat and Pending. We yeah. we have one. Our next conversation is coming up June twenty third. We don't typically release Mark it down. the theme of what we discuss until the day of. Yep. Okay. You want to tell them why? We don't do it More so that it. people don't feel like, oh, I don't like this topic. I'm not going to show up. Makes sense. Good morning. It's it's just important to be to be willing to discuss things that maybe you don't care about because you don't know what you're gonna learn from that. Mm, exactly. Things that make you feel uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What Take if you out your comfort zone? Yeah. Things if you learn, learn that you should care about. Yeah. 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 If Which we is told, where real growth happens. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. if we told people we're gonna be discussing women's you know women's rights, are men gonna show up? Maybe. Maybe not. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? No, no, that's the truth. That's the truth. So, is. June 23rd is the next one. 7 p.m. It starts, ends around 11, 11.30 p.m. We host it at Vegan Fine Foods, which is in downtown Las Olas area, Fort Lauderdale. A uh, Hamarshi. Hamarshi, yeah. Love that name. And it's on Eventbrite. It is on Eventbrite. Our IG is at Eclectic conversations with an s at the end all correct spelling all correct spelling no <laughs> no case no jargon yeah. <laughs> we're on twitter as well eclectic convo no Ele- eclectic convo on twitter and personal handles uh follow me on instagram on on twitter same handle hydro 88 wr and i'm for instagram and twitter i'm beige warrior <laughs> We definitely want to thank you guys for the yeah, being on. Talk. It's an uh, clap track. Word, word. <laughs> he does it though. Right. He does that stuff. Yeah. Right, I'm waiting for it. We <laughs> <laughs> so, so, appreciate you guys have coming on. Um, definitely have to do this again. Yeah. Um, and talk about you know more stuff with you guys. You know, build more. Um, collective conversations. If you're in. The general South Florida area, right? It's a good time. Yeah. It's worth it. Come through. Highly advise you. Physics study group, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Of course. Appreciate it. Finally. Excellent black exactly. This has been through much love. A couple, <laughs> couple, 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 couple of levels leagues. Extra beige yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> wow, crazy. Wow. A couple of levels leaguers in there. Y'all boys stepping out tonight. Yeah. Stepping out. You sneaking out. Word, word. Shout out. Who kids? Shout out <laughs> Kale. Oh, we, had the, we had the window closed this time. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't fly in. We couldn't bring the hard words to the audience. They're there. Audience booster. Oh, they're there. there. <laughs> but before our producer cuts our mics, this has been your mom's favorite our podcast, The Physics Study Group. It has been your boy, Jormatic, a.k.a. Longback Chopra. A.K.A. Wavy McGrady, A.K.A. Wave Chappelle, A.K.A. Black Galapagos, 
aka Malcolm Vex. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. And it's your boy, as I introduce myself, I seen Black, aka Black Dynamite, aka Way Bixby, aka Holy Pacaroches, aka Shabby Ranks, <laughs> Shabby Rankin. And you know, always, just like everybody, all of you are a Swiss army nigga, Swiss army nigga, Swiss army nigga. <laughs> Swiss army nigga. Carry, carry, carry. How you supposed to call that, sir? Oh, my bad. Sorry. Anyway, you gonna bring it back? No. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Word. Now, with the introduction, this is Waka Zuka, aka the Gimmas, aka Mark the Block, aka Gary, and the Jones, aka Father Escalique, aka No More, aka Stop No More. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah. AKA Flabbergasted. Are you waiting for our AKA? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, introduce yourself. Extra, oh, introduce. Snap. Oh, uh, 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 <laughs> I am the beige one. Um. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sometimes you got a one and done. Oh, uh, man. Uh, yeah, Giancarlo, AKA uh, the Broken Stereotype, AKA uh, Mr. Washingo, AKA. <laughs> <laughs> The winding champion. <laughs> Please, I need to give my face. Y'all need to catch the window. False. False. Our next episode, we're going to talk about Ooh. the real winding champion. Maybe y'all should See have you later, that, folks. Pass that out in the next conversation or in the boxing ring, whichever. <laughs> Why not? Why not? First of all, who cut, cut episode, episode like two minutes ago? For real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See y'all later though. Right. One love, peace. Shout out to Jamaica one time, man. Go beat right. USA today. Let's go. Yes, my niggas. Appreciate it.